Hello Vinyl Community, this is Tommy in North Carolina and this is what I would call uh, the calm before the storm. Tomorrow is record store day and I will be partaking and so I'm going to put together a video of everything that happens to me throughout the day uh, but it's going to be a very early morning for me because I'm one of those crazy people that gets up and waits in line. Uh, I've gone over my list. I've checked it a few times. So uh, just to go over it real quick, and you know, as this video progresses, you'll see more stuff. But uh, the Bo Brommel's Bradley's Barn, that's on my highlighted list. Uh, the the Chris Bell single, and eh, probably won't get it. Uh, the Gene Clark uh, Black uh, Backstreet Mirror, that looks really interesting. They probably won't get that. Uh, Let's see, the Joshua Headley single. Joshua Headley, great new country artist, uh, fantastic. Uh, there is a limited third man release from Joshua. Uh, the Ben Queller Shasha, uh, which I wasn't going to get, but I've decided to get it. Uh, and there's, there's one good reason why, and it is because my friend Sean in New Orleans, hi Sean, He's worried about getting this, and so uh, he's thinking that if his store for some reason doesn't get it, and I do, I'm kind of on the fence about it, I'll, I'll sell it to him. If not, I'll keep it because I love that album. It's a great album, and so it's, it's, it's going to be a win-win on that one. I'm getting the mono Pink Floyd, uh, Piper at the Gates of Dawn. That's a definite for me. Um, was on the fence about the Rolling Stones' Satanic Majesties. Uh, that's one that I wasn't sure if it was a mono or stereo. According to Bull Moose's website, they say it's a mono mix. If it's a mono mix, that's probably going to push me toward the get column. But if it's a stereo mix, I'll probably hold off on it. Um, just because, um, you know. And I've, a lot of people are saying that it is indeed a stereo mix. Uh, so that's, that's going to move it over, which is fine. Uh, the big one for me is the Burt Yanch LA Turnaround. Uh, that is a, that is a big one for me and it's a very limited release and I'm hoping that my store gets it tomorrow. That's my number one. That's what I'm after. First and foremost, that's my big number one record store day release, but, uh, there's so very few copies. Um, so that one may have to wait uh, for Monday for Bull Moose, but I, I hope my store gets it because I'd like to I'd like to get a copy. Uh, let's see what else is here on my list. Uh, the Elvis Costello single looks interesting. Probably not going to buy any singles. The Bob Dylan and Grateful Dead, Dylan and the Dead. That's that's a that's a must for me. On the fence about the Harry Nilsson Pussycats, and that might be one between that and the Stones. That might be the two kind of maybe, maybe not. Um, that's Harry Nilsson and John Lennon, of course. Uh, the Neil Young, I've talked myself out of the Neil Young. Again, I didn't get the Harvest Moon, and I'm not going to get this because it's going to be a, a major sort of release that's going to come out. Uh, the other one is the Frank Zappa Lumpy Gravy with uh, Primordial. That's a, that's a must-get for me. Uh, and the Jason Isbell, which actually isn't on this final list that I got. but uh, And I know I know Isbell said, hey, don't buy that. But, yeah, right, okay, I'm not going to buy it. Of course I'm going to get it if it's if it's there, and I'm sure it will be. Um, so, anyway, that's, that's the plan. And so I'll be checking in as the evening and morning uh, wears on and... and putting together a video so uh, stay tuned here and we'll uh, see how the day goes if you're out there I hope you're having a great day or have had a good record store day and uh, be safe and and I'll see you guys very soon all right so it is uh, 3 20 a.m. I woke up at 3 o'clock uh, to go to the record store where I will wait in line uh, that will open at 8 a.m. this morning this is all Eastern time uh, 3 a.m. That's insane, and uh, you know I will admit as much. But uh, as they say, the early bird gets the worm. Uh, but I, my first stop is going to be Horizon Records. Uh, normally, it would have been uh, a much later morning for me, and uh, probably uh, in less of a drive, I would have ended up at Horizon Records. But uh, I wouldn't have been amongst the initial people that, that's there. Of course, I may not be amongst the initial people this morning. Uh, I don't know. people. There may be people that have camped out or whatnot. Uh, but I'll probably get there. Uh, it's about 45 minutes from, from me. And uh, I will get in line. I've got a uh, lawn chair. And it's a little cool this morning. It's a brisk 
36 degrees, which is a lot cooler than I would like for it to be. Uh, but I did bring a jacket and a blanket, and so uh, ready to do a little camping out. The store opens at 8 a.m., and uh, I'll probably check in either from the line or uh, at the store and try to share some of the madness with you guys. So just uh, stay, stay tuned right here, and uh, we'll keep everybody informed with uh, what's going on. And hope everyone's having a, having a good record store day. Okay, it's exactly 4 a.m., and I just pulled into the parking lot at the record store, and I am the only one here. So I will be first in line at Horizon. Um, so that is the first hurdle for me, usually, because I get nervous about these things. And there's a few record store days back where I had to go like way out of town, and I was like way back in line and didn't really get anything. And not because I wasn't early, but just because it just was an unknown. And so at least uh, I didn't know what, what it was going to be like. This is my first time to come here first. Uh, those of you that follow me know that in previous years, I always went to a place uh, about 30 minutes from my house called um, Southern Comfort uh, Music that was in Brevard. But that store closed down uh, shortly after Record Store Day last year. And so... Um, this is my this is my first choice and probably best choice uh, for stuff. So anyway, I'm first in line. So stay tuned uh, for more madness and everything like that. We're going to interrupt this record store day video with a uh, new arrival that came uh, that's not record store day related, but it is a new arrival. This is Michael Nesmith live at the BBC Paris Theater on 7A Records. Um, so this is a new, a fairly new release. Uh, there was a picture disc version that came out. And this is the uh, just regular edition. I've never ordered any or had anything from 7A Records. It's on orange vinyl. It's like an EP, a live EP from a, from a performance in the mid-70s. But uh, let's get to the uh, record store day stuff. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys that. Michael Nesmith at the BBC. Hot off of the truck. All right, I have returned to my lair with uh, my record store day swag uh, and list in hand and everything. And so you guys saw from the earlier videos was there, so on and so forth. I was first in line, and uh, you know, as you could tell from the video. Uh, it was kind of a free-for-all. I don't know that being first in line really mattered that much because, uh, you know, once the doors opened, it was like, Ugh. so um, it kind of led to this complete sort of, you know, craziness, as you could tell uh, in the in the little video samples that I've included here. But uh, I did want to show you guys what I got, and I've, I've kind of uh, opened a few of them so we can look at the vinyl, and so check that out. But first off, the swag... I got uh, this nifty Record Store Day bag, which looks really awesome. Uh, this got the date and everything on it. That looks really good, nice and colorful. And I filled my bag up with a few goodies, so let's talk about them. Uh, the Derek Smalls of Spinal Tap. Uh, you know, I saw this on the swag table, and I grabbed it, and it looks like a picture sleeve. It's got a free download, but uh, there's no record in it. So is this kind of like the record with no hole in the middle? Um, I don't know, but there's there's no record here, um, so I was kind of a bummed out that it wasn't there. Uh, and quite a few CD samplers, which I'll go over really quickly. Uh, there's the Merge uh, sampler that I got. Uh, this is the Record Store Day sampler. Uh, let's see. Also, the Yep Rock sampler. Uh, Fat Possum in Oxford, Mississippi. Hello, Mississippi people. That's a cool sticker as well as a nifty sampler. 
it was kind of cool. So I've looked forward to that. I'll probably actually enjoy that sampler. I'm not a big fan of a lot of samplers. And then finally, this uh, new whole Burbank catalog, which is a throwback uh, Warner Brothers uh, sampler, Record Store Day sampler. Much of the world is sometimes covered by darkness. And then on the back cover, there's only eight tracks on here. Uh, Captain Beefheart calls it God's Golf Ball. Well, there you go. So that's kind of cool. A couple of buttons I grabbed. This is a Record Store Day button with the date. And also a button with uh, Run the Jewels, the uh, Record Store Day uh, ambassador. I've got the, the Jack White one. Uh, not the Jack White one. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the Jack White one. I've got the Dave Grohl one when uh, Dave Grohl was Record Store Day ambassador. But let's get to the real stuff, the actual records and, and what I got. Uh, first off, and I went in and opened this up. Uh, because it was in a in a uh, baggie, and I'll have to figure out what to do with that. Uh, this is the Bo Brummels, Bradley's Barn, which was kind of one of my fence items. But uh, really, really nice, smooth, and uh, I'm looking at the vinyl for the first time, so we're looking at it together. Um, yeah, it's on that nice smoky ashy set it's a great record and um and was was glad to get a good good copy of it i don't know if this one's different as a two record set but we'll check it and see now it's the same color so we won't worry about pulling it out but uh the bo brummels bradley's barn it says limited to uh 3000 copies i you know i have doubts about that stuff so we'll see the other one was one i was after uh the new reissue of the dylan and the dead album from we are vinyl and i've got one of the other dylans on that that's really neat this is supposed to also be a special colored vinyl if i can get it out of here I have to be very careful i don't think i cut it all the way open so give me just a second bear with me while i Make sure I split that just the right way. Get that out. Hope everyone's having a good a good record store day. Bob holding court with the dead. Hope you're all getting one at what we're after. Oh look at that. A tie-dye red and blue. That looks that looks beautiful. I dig that. So uh, one of the few Dylan records I don't have on vinyl, so I wanted to Make sure I got a copy of that. Uh, Third Man put out this Joshua Headley. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this guy. His record just came out as well, Mr. Jukebox. If you like classic country music, this is, a, this is an artist you should definitely check out. And this was on a uh, clear, translucent brown. I think they call it uh, bourbon vinyl, which, you know, kind of cool. The, it's got some unreleased stuff on it that's not album, non-album tracks. The one that we were told not to buy by the artist, Jason Isborn, the 400 unit. I'm just a big fan of Jason's. This is live at the Twist and Shout from 2007. Yeah, Jason tweeted after it was announced not to, he's like, don't bother buying it. Apparently he wasn't very proud of the performance. I think this is just standard black. And it is standard black, 180 gram vinyl. There's a download card in here, but um, here's, sorry Jason, if it's on vinyl and it's got your name on it, it's got, um, you know, it's just six tracks, but um, big Isbel fan. This was the big one. This is the one I, I was really after today, uh, the Burt uh, Janch album, L.A. Turnaround. Uh, sorry about the glare on that. I know that um, that's probably frustrating, but... Uh, I still have it in the shrink. I've not, you know, pulled the shrink off because I want to keep all the cards and stuff. But this was produced by uh, Michael Nesmith. There's there's Nez right there, and of course Red Roads played on this album. And uh, just it's a rare album, and I think there were only supposed to be 500 of these pressed, if the numbers are to be believed. Beautiful blue. This is my first time seeing these as well, because like I said, I just opened them right before I did the video here, and wanted to share them with you guys as well um, for the for the video. 
Um, there's a there's a booklet in here too. I'm not going to pull everything out um, because what I'm going to do with a lot of these uh, for the next uh, week or so, they're going to show up as uh, my record daily records, my other channel, which is my plug here. If you haven't subscribed to Daily Records and you haven't been keeping up with that. There's a link up in my description box. Go subscribe to Daily Records, and I'm going to showcase some of these records on, on there. Um, so this is going to be some of my video content. The next one is uh, Ben Queller, Sha Sha. This was an album that came out in 2002. Um, it's a great uh, power pop record. Ben Queller writes, writes fantastic pop songs. He teamed up with Ben Folds and Ben Lee to do, uh, fittingly, The Bens. And this was one I was really on the fence about, white vinyl. I was on the fence about this, but my friend Sean in New Orleans, hi Sean, he wanted this record, he was not on the fence about it, and he was really worried that his store down there would not have this one in stock. And so I told him, I said, look, here's the deal, I'll get it, and if you don't get it, because his store opened uh, a lot later than mine, if you don't get it, and I, I'll have it for you. Um, so worst case scenario, I would have just sold him my copy. But instead, I, I have it. Which is fine by me, because it's an album that I like. The next one, and some of these are gatefolds, and I just haven't opened them up. So sorry, I'm not going to pull them over. This is uh, Pussycats by Harry Nilsson, produced by John Lennon, the famous Lost Weekend. This is supposedly limited to 1,500 copies. It's got a booklet in there. Um, and... This is one we weren't sure about because I do have an original copy, but this is on this nice uh, splattered um, wood. So it's the first vinyl reissue of that particular album. Uh, but being a Nielsen fan and a John Lennon fan, that's a that's a that's a, a gimme. This is gonna be fun to open because I just kind of sliced it, but I've not opened it all the way. Uh, this is the Pink Floyd, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, the mono uh, edition that uh, that was released today. And, um, you know, this was weird because there were supposed to be, according to the numbers on the Record Store Day site, this was supposed to be one of those that uh, had, and we're going to go ahead and open it up. I've got the shrink still on it. I've kind of just sliced it. So we're going to go ahead and open it the rest of the way. Uh, but from what I saw in my store... And from what my friend Sean was telling me, there weren't a lot of these in the stores. And so I'm wondering if this thing was as limited, not as, it was more limited than they, they kind of thought. Because I kind of got the impression that this was going to be one of those, that there were going to be a lot of copies available. And it was going to be readily, readily uh, available to most stores. Uh, and as it turns out, it looked like it was, it was going to be pretty rare. I'm just going to move that over there to keep the information. So it comes in this nice little box that opens like an envelope, just like so. So we're going to carefully open this guy up. And there is a poster inside, as well as the vinyl record itself. So it's in a nice little, little, little case. So here's Piper, the mono edition. Um, Columbia label, and it's standard black vinyl. So, so there's nothing, uh, nothing to the vinyl itself. Um, but uh, it's got this nice, elaborate sort of, sort of package that uh, is probably going to be annoying when you just go to listen to the record. But it is the Mono Piper, and I did get it, and there it is for everyone to see. Now if I can get it back together, which I did, so there it is. And finally, uh, last and certainly not least, the Frank Zappa Lumpy Gravy Primordial. Uh, this is the original 1967 orchestral only edit of Lumpy Gravy. It's available for the first time. Uh, it's uh, mastered on 45 RPM. Uh, and uh, Analog, all analog mastering. This was supposed to come out, look at that burgundy, nice, nice. So, this was supposed to come out on Black Friday and it got pushed back from what I understand. And uh, here it is.
So this was a big one for me because it was on my must must grab list. So that is my record store day haul. Fortunately, and I think I was I was telling my wife this that this is the first record store day that I've done where I think I got everything I wanted in one swoop. The store opened at 8. I was out the door and checked out by 8.30 and on my way home. Uh, but it's been a long day, really tiring as you can tell. So I must go to sleep now. But uh, thanks for watching. I am at 365 subscribers, which is incredible. Uh, I want to thank everyone that's, that's tuned in and has been watching my videos and commenting. Uh, continue to do so. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Check out Daily Records, please. I'm going to feature a lot of these on the upcoming uh, editions of Daily Records, so stay tuned for that. And um, and so so make sure make sure you're subscribed to that channel as well, and so you can get the updates uh, the updates there. But um, 365 subscribers. So I've been doing this right at one year. My first video was a Record Store Day video one year ago and so now I've been in the vinyl community for one year and I want to thank each and every one of you for your support, the kind words and the friendships that I've made here. Uh, it really means a lot to me and uh, I, I don't take it lightly. I, it really is cool that uh, there's, there's so many of us out there and we're all interested in this thing. And uh, again, if you're all participating, uh, I hope that you've had a good and successful record store day and you got what you were looking for. Um, and if not, you know, maybe, maybe next time, I, I don't know of any advice other than to get up early and to wait in a line. Uh, and, but if that's not your scene, it, you know, you never know. Um, if you're watching this and it's the still record store day, I'm hoping to have this up on record store day. If you're watching this, um, Bull Moose, uh, bullmoose.com, they do their record store day stuff. They, whatever's left over out of their stores, they sell it on Monday morning at like 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So if there's a title that you were interested in that you didn't get out and get or your store didn't have it or whatever, you may want to try Bull Moose on Monday and do the do their online sale. Uh, they don't jack the prices or anything, so it's 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 on the up and up. You're going to pay what everybody else paid for it. Uh, and, you know, I could do a whole other video on eBay flippers. I'm not going to. But um, thanks again to everyone that watch that watches. I'll be, uh, like I said, taking a break now and going to sleep. Uh, but then I'll be spinning these records. So follow my Instagram and Twitter feed. It's Tommy Burton 75 and you can see these things in action. But uh, in the meantime, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.